Welcome back to On The Move with Victor Shi. This is Victor Shi. It is Wednesday, May 24th, and today we are going to talk about someone who we all know will go down in history as one of the worst speakers of all time, if not the worst. And we are seeing that right now under his tenure as House Speaker, we could be defaulting on our debt for the first time in U.S. history, something his predecessor, Nancy Pelosi, would have never let happen. But here's the good news. As bad as Kevin McCarthy might be, he's also up for re-election in 2024. And the person he is running against is not holding back any punches in his election. That person is John Burroughs, who, like, who unlike uh, Kevin McCarthy, has spent his entire life fighting for working families in California's 20th congressional district. District. And today we are going to be talking about how to defeat Kevin McCarthy. And John is the perfect person to join me today. It is so great to see you, John. And thank you so much for joining me to talk about this subject. Yeah, great to see you, Victor. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. So you know, I have to ask you about your campaign. But first, the person you're running to replace right now, as I said in the introduction, is overseeing a process that could lead to our nation's first ever um, default. What do you make of everything we're seeing right now in Washington, D.C.? Yeah, I, um, you know, I, I think that right now it's it's absolutely despicable what's happening with the Republicans and what they're doing under the, under the helm of, of Kevin McCarthy. Um, he's somebody who's playing politics with with our economy. He's somebody who's playing politics with the with Americans' uh, um, work um, and their living. And and it, he's he, he's basically using the system um, right now. You know, the 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 debt ceiling um, as something as as a tool that yeah. that he can leverage. And I think that it's it's absolutely despicable what what he's done. Um, uh, for, to our Congress and 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 the, the the speakership. I mean, just to remind everyone, this is someone who voted not once, not twice, but three times to increase the debt limit under Trump. But like you said, I mean, he's holding our nation hostage right now. And I'm I'm wondering, I mean, what do you think is Kevin McCarthy's kind of end goal here? I mean, wh why is he doing all of this, and and why is he kind of doing something that he would have never done during the Trump administration? Yeah, you're exactly right. Um, he would have never done this under the Trump administration, but because you know Biden, a Democrat who's in office, he's now leveraging, trying to, to leverage his position to to you know um, gain what we've seen that he wants to gain in the in the past. Right? He went through 15 rounds of voting just to become Speaker, yeah. and he has made backdoor deals after backdoor deals just to gain that leverage or that amount of power. Um, and and he's given it all away. And that's exactly what Kevin McCarthy is interested in this debt ceiling talk, because he's shown us that that was what he was interested in when he was pursuing the speakership. Um, he's only interested in power. He's only interested in helping out his wealthy friends. He's only interested in, in empowering himself and other Republicans and other corporate interests that have already bought him out. Um, that's that's all Kevin McCarthy's interested in. Yeah, no, I, and, and I don't think anyone should assume that he has the votes now. Just like you said, it took him 15 rounds to become speaker um, back in January. But I think, I think the more important question is, I mean, what do you think people who are in Kevin McCarthy's district, the Republicans you've talked to, the constituents you've talked to of his, think of kind of what's happening right now? Do they see this as President Biden's fault or do they see kind of Kevin McCarthy and what he's trying to do and kind of right through that? I think that the constituents in Kevin McCarthy's district are, are actually really upset. Um, as what and what he's trying to doing and, and the deals that he's trying to propose. He, I mean, this this is somebody who's trying to propose uh, twenty percent uh, cuts to to veteran benefits. Yeah. Uh, folks, folks who have gone overseas, um, who have served, who have served our country, they've done their time and and they've made that sacrifice in their life, and 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 they're coming back. And you know, there was a deal, there's a promise that was made to them. If, if if they contribute to their country, if they serve their country, that they're going to you know receive X, Y, and Z benefits. And now Kevin McCarthy is trying to renege on that deal. And and cut those benefits from them. Um, so uh, you know, folks are folks are upset. You know, we live in a very patriotic. You know, the Central Valley is a very patriotic area. You know, you go down in any neighborhood, and you'll find you know most of the majority of the houses will have American flags hung up. Um, you know, if you if you drive down the street, you see a lot of cars with you know bumper stickers that says you know Navy Mom or Army Dad or, or, or something of that. And he's trying to cut those benefits from them. Um, and he's also trying to hide it. He, he's not he's not he doesn't want it to be right. big news, especially in the district. So, you know, our job as a campaign is to communicate exactly what he's doing in Washington. Um, that is playing with people's lives mm -hmm. um, just for just for the sole gain of power for Kevin McCarthy in Washington. So let's shift to your campaign because you're running um, a great campaign so far. First, tell us about kind of you, who you are and, and kind of what is what is it that you would bring to California's 20th congressional district? Yeah, so I, I was born and raised here in the Central Valley. I've spent my entire life here. 
Um, I worked with, you know, with, with multiple people um, um, throughout the Central Valley. Uh, and, you know, I, I went to school here and this is where my roots are, right? This yeah. is this is where all my family is. This is where all my friends are. Um, and, you know, I've, I've worked in the city. I've worked in the city of Fresno. I worked with with constituents and, and kind of like the problems that they're that they're going through and they're dealing with on a day to day basis. And it's not the same you know, political nonsense that Kevin McCarthy, the culture wars that Kevin McCarthy and the Republicans are trying to start. Yeah. You know, these are hardworking people who, you know, who, who pay their taxes and they expect certain services and they're not receiving those services like clean drinking water to rural small towns. Right. Um, some of the hardest working people in our country are not getting clean drinking water delivered to their faucet. So then they have to go to the store and purchase that water on top of having to still pay the water bill that they can't use. So, you know, these, these, these people, they're, they're, they're fed up, they're upset. Um, and, and they have real concerns and real issues that they need to be addressed. And for the past two decades, Kevin McCarthy hasn't been addressing any of them. Um, it, it's only so it's his only sole purpose in Congress is to gain power for himself. Um, so the campaign that we're running, it's a very people powered campaign. Um, all of our, all of our, our donations, all our grassroots, all of our volunteers are grassroots. Um, and you know, what our objective is, is, is to talk to as many folks as possible yeah. in this district and let them know about what Kevin McCarthy is doing, you know? Um, and then also, you know, one of, one of our, 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 our what we're trying to do is get as many young people out to vote as possible, because in this past election, only 20% of 18 to 34 year olds voted mm -hmm. only eight, only 20% of 18 to 34 year olds. So we're missing of the registered 18 to 34 year olds. We're missing 80% of those folks showing up to the, yeah. to the ballot, yeah. thinking that their vote actually counts because time after time they've been told, Oh, my vote, my vote doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of things, but in reality it does. So, so that is our job is to communicate that to them um, and let them know that, Hey, there's, there's a candidate out here who, you know, who's working class. Um, you know, he doesn't have wealthy friends um, mm -hmm. like, like Kevin McCarthy does. And, and that's the campaign that we're running. It's, it's going to be a people powered campaign for the people. That's amazing. And I want to get more into the, to the youth vote uh, in a second, but you know, you mentioned Kevin McCarthy holding power for 20 years, the last election he won by, I think more than 20 percentage points. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, what do you make, what do you think makes 2024 different from 2022? Are you starting to see that shift in the electorate? Because I mean, 20 points is a, is a lot. And I'm wondering kind of if you think that composition will, will kind of stick in 2024. Yeah, absolutely. Make a great point. Um, so with Kevin McCarthy, he's never had a serious contender. He's never had somebody who started as early as we have. You know, we're, we launched 13 months out from the primary, yeah. um, you know, and, 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 and we are we are working day in and day out to make sure that we end Kevin McCarthy's term in Congress, his his time in Congress. Um, you know, like and, and that's that's the thing that, that, that we're really focused on is just putting putting our heads down, doing the work, talking to as many voters as possible, because, you know, that's that's what's actually going to change. That's what's actually going to get people to show up and vote is when you talk to them. You know, I, I think that in the past, um, you know, folks who ran against Kevin McCarthy, um, they didn't they didn't raise the dollars that they needed to raise. Right. Yeah, they, or, yeah. or they put up a couple of commercials and and that's what they were capable of doing. Right. But, you know, we, we've launched a, um, an incredible volunteer program, which I'm which I'm humbled over. Um, and, and and we're putting in the work and we're talking to the voters and the people that the people who uh, who, who we need to show up to count because, you know, that, that the 20 point percentage, um, it is a big gap. It is a big uh, block. But we see. And as we've been talking to folks and, and even the younger folks, they want change. They want somebody yeah. who, who, who they feel is going to fight for them. And then for 20 years, Kevin McCarthy hasn't showed up. So so that's so so I'm, I'm optimistic. I've, I've had a, um, a plethora of, of great conversations yeah. and I am just energized every single day. I think one of the most important things that we can maybe hopefully give our audience um, in, in these final remaining minutes is something about, I think, what what they're now called relational organizing, which is how do you have that quality conversation with someone else? And whether it's a young person or whether it's maybe a Republican or independent, do you have any advice for our audience in terms of how they can have those conversations in a meaningful and kind of quality way? Because data shows that you know more than anything else now, those peer-to-peer -peer interactions, those relational kind of moments are more important than any other kind of form of organizing. Yeah, yeah. You know, relational organizing is is absolutely a game changer. Um, you know, when when you're a college student, right, and you fully and you feel like your vote doesn't count, 
but one of your classmates or one of your friends yeah, walks up yeah. to you and they start talking to you about your vote and, and, and who you're voting for and, you know, their reason for voting. Um, that makes an impact. That makes a difference. Yeah. So so relational organizing is an absolute game changer because, you know, a friend to friend, you can get you can get them to, to show up and vote. Right. Um, family to family, you can get them to show up to vote. Family, family to family friend. Um, relational organizing is what is going to change this election. Yeah. Absolutely. So we're a little more than a year out uh, until November 2024. Um, wh how, what is your plan going forward? How can our audience help you? Yeah, plan going forward is, talk. you know, like I said, we're going to be talking to as many people as we possibly can. We're going to be showing up, you know, we're going to be on college campuses. Um, we're going to be registering, you know, folks in California, you can register, pre-register to vote at, at 16 years of age. Um, so we're going to be registering as many young people as possible. We're going to be talking to as many young people as possible. And we're going to be knocking as many doors as possible. And um, the best way that they can come out is, you know, if, if they're within within distance of, of coming into the district and helping us on, on, a, on a canvassing um, day, then that's, you know, come out to the district. Um, we'd love to have you. Um, if you can't make it out to the district, you know, they can go to Burroughs, um, burroughsforcongress.com, um, make a donation, whether it's, you know, a dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars, it all adds up and it all counts. Yeah. Um, that's what's going to change this election. That's what's going to get Kevin McCarthy out of office. Definitely. Well, it's campaigns like yours that give me hope. Thank you so much, John, for coming on the show this morning and best of luck to you. Thank you so much, Victor. I really appreciate it. Of course. Thanks so much. Well, John was um, amazing. I, I think, you know, for someone to run against Kevin McCarthy is so important. Like you said, Kevin McCarthy has basically gone uncontested for the past, you know, decade without any serious uh, person to challenge him. And I think John Burroughs is the first person who is serious about defeating him out of office. And it seems like he's running a great campaign. Like you said, if you have the capacity to go to the 20th district to help out, do that. If not, I'm sure there are plenty of virtual opportunities, phone banking, sending letters, um, just kind of try to find a way to look up John Burroughs on the internet and hopefully you can uh, see him there. Um, there's some news that I, I want to get into today, uh, particularly regarding uh, Donald Trump uh, and, and some of the trouble that he's in. As I'm sure all of you know, yesterday there was some uh, bombshell news uh, late at night. Basically, Trump posted on social media a letter uh, to Garland that his attorney sent to Garland. And I'm just going to read it for you because it, it's it's quite the kind of inappropriate language that's used here. But aside from that, it's quite damning um, for, for kind of, I think, how scared they are. It reads, Dear Attorney General Garland, we represent Donald J. Trump, the 45th president of the United States, and the investigation currently being conducted by the special counsel's office. Unlike President Biden, his son Hunter, and the Biden family, President Trump is being treated unfairly. No president of the United States has ever in the history of our country been baselessly investigated in such an outrageous and unlawful fashion. We request a meeting at your earliest convenience to discuss the ongoing injustice that is being perpetrated by your special counsel and his prosecutors. Um, just for a little bit of context, Attorney General Garland responded basically saying, this is not my meeting to take. It is special counsel Jack Smith and his prosecutors. So you have to meet with him. But aside from that point, a lot of people on legal Twitter, a lot of lawyers have now been saying this is basically the final story draw before a possible indictment. They wouldn't be sending this letter unless they know that there are possible indictments coming down the pipe. And so, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. But this could be a very, very big sign of some of the trouble that Donald Trump is uh, expected to, uh, you know, face in the coming days and, and weeks from the special counsel. There's new reporting also from the New York, uh, from the Wall Street Journal that the special counsel has basically all but finished its investigation into the special, uh, the, the uh, sorry, the Mar-a-Lago documents case. So, pretend some bad news for Trump. And it seems like Trump's lawyers are reacting to that and see that they're trying to make a deal now. And as Andrew Weissman said on Twitter yesterday, this is the end of the road before an indictment standard practice to allow defense to make a presentation before deciding to charge. This is likely Trump's effort to appeal after being rebuffed by Smith. And uh, so we will see what happens, but I will keep you all posted on that. Um, but we will also be watching out what happens with the debt ceiling. Uh, according to uh, Kevin McCarthy, there still really isn't much movement on that. Um, fingers crossed that there will be and that we can reach a deal soon because uh, I think people are starting to get a little bit concerned as they should be. Uh, but we'll, we'll keep you updated on that. Just a quick programming note. We'll be back tomorrow at 8 a.m. Pacific. 11 a.m. Eastern, right here on youtube.com slash Politicon. We have Representative Jasmine Crockett joining us on the show to talk about um, her time in the House, uh, her amazing 
um, a, a moment in the House last week pushing back against Republicans and Lauren Boebert um, and, and some of the things that's happening in her state, Texas, which I know concerns myself and I'm sure everyone listening here, um, some just really tragic things happening in Texas right now and things that um, you know we should all pay attention to and vote for, uh, vote against in 2024. And then on Friday, I will be joined by someone who I'm very much looking forward to talking to about his campaign. And that will be Colin Allred, who is running against Ted Cruz for the 2024 U.S. Senate race in Texas. It will be exciting. It will be uh, amazing. And, and Colin is, is, an, uh, is a great person. So he will be joining me this Friday, again, 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube.com slash Politicon. Thank you all for watching this episode with John Burroughs, and I will see you all tomorrow.